Good evening, good evening, good evening. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion pastoral teachings. We thank God for your presence on tonight. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. We greet you with Jesus' joy and each of you in your respective places, we greet you with divine love. And again, we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. We'd like to call your attention uh, to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, begin reading at verse 26. That's Daniel, Old Testament, chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 26. If you're there or when you get there, you will find these words recorded. <clears throat> the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, or the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Verse 28. <clears throat> but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar. What shall be in the latter days? Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Let's go down to verse 46 of the second chapter of Daniel. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and revealer of secrets, seeing thou could reveal this secret. Verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. From those verses, and you can read in between, between 28 and 46, and you'll get the entire story. However, uh, from those verses tonight, we want to speak from these words, possessing a purpose greater than you. Possessing a purpose greater than you. To have or to own a purpose, to own intentions or something to be attained greater, larger than you. My brothers and my sisters, as we move on this journey for, from earth went to heaven, I want us to understand the importance of possessing, having a purpose greater than ourselves. If we look closely at the text tonight, Daniel, Daniel was a prophet and Daniel was taken into captivity. He did not know what would happen to him. He had lived like a prince, but he became a slave. Daniel, Daniel probably wondered if he would be forced to walk in a mine or if the enemy would sacrifice him to some pagan god. Daniel was forced to go to a place or a city called Babylon with thousands of 
others in captivity. And as we think about it, think with me, the road was long and the journey took over five months. He was led from a place where he was one of the elect to a place of captivity. He was made a slave. Many of us, as we read our history, we can attest uh, to that. It took over five months and many people on that journey uh, to Babylon died along the way. I want you to get the picture. Daniel was surprised when the chief of the court officials choose him and three of his friends to be trained for the king's service. Now, many of you know about that, and you can see that in Daniel chapter 1, verse 6. You know about the other three, who's known as the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. However, the name before it was changed was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So now, for three years, uh-huh, for three long years, they prepared them, the Babylonians prepared them, teaching them to speak and write in their language. The old saying is, and I find it is, it is to be true, he that controls the language of the people controls the people. So, so the Babylonians taught Daniel and the three Hebrew boys and the others who were in captivity in Babylon to speak and to write in the Babylonian language, educating them in all of their ways. But Daniel was resolved. Hear me well. It did not matter what his captors did to him. He would not give up or give in. My brothers and my sisters, many times when we are faced with hardships, harm, and hurt in our lives, we have the tendency to give up. And many times we give up because we don't possess a purpose greater than ourselves. Daniel was resolved. He did not, he would not give up or give in. He would not defile himself, nor would he bow down to a pagan God. Now, Daniel literally was determined to live, watch this, for something greater. So my question to each of us tonight, are we living for something greater than we are? Are we living for something greater than ourselves? Daniel was living for something greater than rulers or empires. And the scripture says that Daniel was among the best and the brightest of the Hebrews. But now... He is in captivity in Babylon. He's a slave. He has been moved from and he led to slavery. Yes, he was chosen along with three other young men from the tribe of Judah to be part of the court of King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of Babylon, of Babylonians, or the Babylonians' empire. Stay with me. Now, some people put in Daniel's predicament might have compromised and became Babylonians. Mm -hmm. Others may have refused and been executed. But Daniel and his friends, 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego took another course. And many times, my brothers and sisters, we can't just, just follow the crowd. We can't just roll with the punches. We have to take a stand. And Daniel and his friends took another course. They remained true to a higher purpose. Are y'all with me? They sought to glorify God by serving with excellence the king who had made them slaves. In other words, they served with excellence to the person who had them in captivity. So, I want you to get this. Daniel possessed a purpose that was greater than himself. And that purpose gave Daniel three things that I want you to grasp. First of all, it gave Daniel clarity. Listen, feelings of resentment for the people who had conquered his nation must have been mixed with hope of a better life. Resentment for the people who had brought them into captivity must have been mixed with hope. Resentment mixed with hope for a better life. However, Daniel would not let his grief drive him to bitterness. My brothers and my sisters, sometimes we must stand and not allow the persons who have uh, dug ditches for us to cause us not to possess a greater purpose than ourselves in our lives. Are you with me so far? You see, Daniel would be grateful for a chance to make a difference. So my question to us right here is how many of us have been focusing on making a difference for the God who loves us, created us, saved us, and sanctified us? How many of us are focused on making a difference. How many of us are focusing on possessing a greater purpose than ourselves? One theologian said something like this. What I really like is to be clear in my mind what I am to do not what I am to know. Did you get that? You see, my brothers and sisters, the thing is to understand myself, to see what God really wants me to do. Now, the Bible teaches us just not to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. In other words, not just to hear what God says, but to do what God says. And many of us, we fall off right there. We know what he says, but the doing causes us some problems. Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, would be faithful to God and make the most of the opportunity they were being given. So let me pause for a moment and ask the question again. How many of us are taking advantage, taking advantage of the opportunity that has been given to us, even in the midst of turmoil and torment, a pandemic and problems and pain and perplexities, confusions and calamities? How many of us have taken advantage of the opportunity given to us that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone or struggling in life 
because of situations and circumstances, how many of us have, have taken advantage of an opportunity? So, Daniel possessed a purpose that gave him, first of all, clarity. Daniel was clear about what he was supposed to do. Do you have clarity in your life about what you are supposed to do? The second thing I noticed that Daniel possessed, that the purpose that he possessed gave him was conviction, belief, strong belief. You see, when Daniel and his friends were offered food from the king's table, it's in chapter two, round verse five, which would violate the dietary law that had always followed, that they had, they had always followed. They had always followed the law of God of what they should or would eat. Uh-huh. They had a choice to make when they would eat the food from the king's table or follow the laws of God of what to not eat and what to eat. Uh-huh. Would they bow to convenience or would they stand upon conviction? Well, you know the story. They decided that they would not defile themselves. Verse 8. That was really a great, great risk. Why do I say that? Because they stood for what was right. And many times, and many of us as Christians, when the going get rough and the going get tough, we have the tendency to not stand for what's right. And my saying, and I didn't make this up, I got it from somebody else. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. If you don't stand for right, you will fall for wrong. Mm -hmm. They had certain rules that would sustain them in defeat or victory. You got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that because of whose you are, because you are a child of God, you must understand that you have values that will sustain you in defeat or victory. And now these values, tested by passion, were convictions, strong beliefs. So let's look closer here. These four young men were, were, were not lifeless people who blended in with the crowd. Now sometimes it takes uh, it takes a strong believer to not just blend in with the the crowd. It takes a real believer to stand when the crowd is stupid. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. But but these young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, would not stand. Would not blend with the crowd. You see, people with conviction, people with strong belief, never do that. They never run with the rabbit and hollow with the hound. In other words, they don't have crowd instinct. They don't stand because the crowd, or they don't blend in with the crowd. They don't do what the crowd is doing. So, Daniel possessed a purpose that gave him, first of all, clarity. Secondly, gave him, it gave him conviction. Thirdly, Daniel possessed a purpose that gave him confidence, trust. 
my brothers and my sisters, people of faith. People of faith has, I believe, two levels of confidence. And they are self-confidence and God-confidence. Self-confidence comes from knowing and trusting yourself. God-confidence comes from knowing and trusting God. Simple, right? Mm -hmm. When Daniel refused the king's food and suggested an alternative course of action to God, to God in charge of him, to the God of the gods that were in charge of him, when he chose an alternative action to the one who was in charge of him, I believe he was confident that honoring God would bring positive results. And my brothers and sisters, you got to believe that with all your heart, with all your spirit, with all your soul, and all your mind, that trusting God or having confidence and honoring God will bring positive results. Now let's look at uh, chapter, <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 11. And let's see if we can see it in the text or in the Bible. Then said Daniel to Mershe, who was a prince of the eunuchs, had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. We know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <coughs> this is what it says. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. You see that? Uh-huh. Now, remember now the confidence that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys had in God and they believed that honoring God would pay off, would bring positive results. Let's read a little further, verse 14. So he consented to them in this matter and proved or tested them for 10 days. Verse 15. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. You see that? Now, <clears throat> the confidence paid off. My brothers and sisters, when you have confidence in God our Father, it will always pay off. And it'll pay off handsomely, if I can use that term. After 10 days, the text says, the four young Hebrew men look healthier and better, better nourished than any of them who had eaten the king's food. Listen carefully. My brothers and my sisters, the stories of people like Daniel reminds us that God has a purpose for each of us if only we will seek it. Now let me take a sidebar for a second. Do you know what your purpose is in the kingdom? Do you know what your purpose is for God and God's work, God's service? Perhaps you're saying that you don't know. And that is probably because you hadn't consulted God. You need to know what your purpose is in this life. You need to seek what your purpose is. 
My brothers and sisters, we just need to obey what God asks us to do and be faithful to him. Now, generally, God has asked us to do some things from a general standpoint. And then he has asked us to do some things from a specific standpoint. But you need to know what God requires and requests of you. So now, we have, we, we have seen in this lesson tonight that possessing a greater purpose than you, Daniel, possessed a purpose that gave him clarity, conviction, and confidence. And it would do the same thing for you. Now, the question that I'm going to focus on now is what can we learn? What lessons can we learn from Daniel in our text tonight? What can we really grasp and get and gain from Daniel chapter 2? Well, the first thing that we can learn is when your purpose is greater than you, it will set you apart from the crowd. I know you thought it was something deep, but it's simple. When your purpose is, is greater than you, it will set you apart from the crowd. You see, my brothers and my sisters, although Daniel and his friends were the elite and elect of Israel, they stood out even among them because they sensed that God had a bigger purpose for them and they stood up for God. In the midst of what the king wanted them to do, they stood up for God. My brothers and sisters, in the midst of what your friends and your foes want you to do when it's not godly, you must remember to stand up for God because as we have seen in the text, it paid off. By honoring God, it pays off. When you follow a purpose, hear me well, that is greater than you, you are, or it makes you Stand out from the crowd. Now, again, I know that we have some people, in, in even in Christendom, have uh, crowd mentality and the herd instinct. Some people will see that when you when you have a greater purpose than you, it makes you stand out from the crowd, and some people will see that. And guess what? They will attack you for standing out from the crowd. Yeah. But shall I encourage you tonight? Do not compromise in that area. Be yourself and remain true to God. So, when your purpose is greater than you are, when you possess a greater purpose than you, you can learn from Daniel that you will, you will, it will set you apart from the crowd. Secondly, it will require God's favor. When your purpose is greater than you, it will require God's favor, God's blessings, God's help. At this point, many times it is easy for you to rely on yourself. And many people think that is the best way. 
to rely totally on themselves. But my brothers and my sisters, when your purpose is greater than you, than yourself, you need God's favor to accomplish whatever your purpose is. Mm -hmm. When you submit yourselves to God and tap into his purpose for your life, he will ask you, watch this, he will ask you to do things you are incapable of doing. In other words, you can't do it without his help. However, listen carefully. Don't let that dissuade you from following God. God is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. So don't, please don't, let that dissuade you from following God. When he, when he asks you to do things that you are not capable of doing yourself, don't let that dissuade you from following God. Because he's going to help you along the way. My brothers and sisters, hear this. Greatness doesn't come from doing all you can do. No. It comes from allowing God to do all he can do through you. Now, I got to rewind the tape on that because I want you to get that. You probably missed that. Listen, greatness doesn't come from doing all you can do. It comes from allowing God to do all he can do through you. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing I mentioned that we can learn from Daniel is when your purpose is greater than you, it will set you apart from the crowd. Secondly, it will require God's favor. It requires God's help, God's blessing. Thirdly, it will give you courage. Mm -hmm. When your purpose is greater than you, it will give you courage. Listen carefully. The longer you walk with God and strive to live according to his greater purpose, the more courage he will give you to fulfill his will for your life. Are you with me? Remember, many of us, we remember even in elementary school of, of reading the story about Daniel in the lion's den. And because of Daniel's courage not to play by the rules of the king who told everybody, that, uh, told Daniel he couldn't pray. Daniel prayed anyway. And although he was thrown in the lion's den, God saved him from the hungry lion. God gave Daniel courage. Courage, my brothers and sisters, is like a muscle. It is strengthened by use. Courage is like a rubber band. It is not useful until it is stretched. Are you getting, are you getting this? My brothers and my sisters, hear me well. God will give you the courage you need. Sometimes you just have to ask him. For he has said in his word, we have not because we ask not. And Jesus said, that if you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. Ask in faith. And Jesus says, ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So sometimes it's just by the asking. He will give you the courage you need. Now the last thing. 
that we can learn from Daniel. When your purpose is greater than you, remember that it will set you apart from the crowd. Secondly, it will require God's favor. Thirdly, it will give you courage. The last thing, it, your purpose, will be tested. Yes, my brothers and sisters, your purpose, if it's greater than you, it will be tested. You see, here it is. When you choose to follow a greater purpose, it is not a one-time decision. Your resolve, your determination will be tested. Mm -hmm. If you want to finish well, you must keep choosing to follow God. You can't have it your way. This is not Burger King. You can't just choose God today and put him aside tomorrow and expect to have a greater purpose. You must choose to keep following God. Keep choosing to follow God. You see, in the text, in chapter 2 of Daniel, when they wanted Daniel to eat the wrong food, he had to choose to follow God. When they wanted him to interpret the king's dream, facing the lions, he had to choose to follow God. God, as I close tonight, my brothers and my sisters, when the times of testing appears, when the time of testing comes, I want to encourage you, make the right decision. You see, God gives us a choice. We can choose God or we can choose the enemy who is known as Satan uh, or the devil. We can choose the good way or we can choose the evil way. So I want to encourage you tonight, if you want to possess a greater purpose than you, then make sure that you make the right decision and that is Choose God. Why do I say that? Good question. Glad to ask. Because your purpose is not for yourself. Your purpose is for God. Whatever we do on this earth as believers, as Christians, we're doing it for a God who loved us, saved us, sanctified us, keeps us. We are his workmanship. We do it for him. And although it, it appears that we are doing it for mankind, and it is, but ultimately, it is for God. So yes, my brothers and my sisters, you can possess a greater purpose than you. Remember that God saved you from hell and damnation to do a work for him. He did not save us to take us to heaven. Because if that was the case, he would have saved us and killed us dead and took us to heaven. But he saved us to remain on this earth to do a great work for him. That is our purpose. Our purpose, again, I must say, is not for us. Our purpose 
For living is for our Father which art in heaven, that is God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity on tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for reminding us through your divine word that we can possess a purpose greater than ourselves. And that purpose is for you who loved us in spite of us, saved us when we were on our way to eternal damnation. We thank you now. We thank you for this word tonight uh, through the prophet Daniel of how to possess a greater purpose than ourselves. We pray, God, that you will let this word tonight sink deep into our hearts, minds, and spirits, that we'll become better, better Christians, better disciples, and better ambassadors of yours. We pray now, God, that each of us and all of us will think of whatever our purpose is in this world, in this life, that we'll be about pursuing it and doing it for the kingdom. We pray for the church. We pray for the believers. We pray for uh, the body of Christ, that we'll continue to carry out the assignment that you have given us. We pray for those who may be weak, those who may be asleep, those who may be sick, that they would wake up to the sense of their duties and their responsibilities. We pray, God, that you will heal us from all maladies, sicknesses, and disease, and that we will be strengthened uh, to do your will and to do your work. We pray for those who are backslidden. We pray for those who are not saved, never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. We pray now, God, because you said in your word that you want everybody to be saved. That is your desire. So we pray that the lost, the ungodly, would be saved. And if you are watching or listening on tonight and you are not saved, I would ask if you will pray this prayer with me if you want to be saved. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need salvation. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. And I receive Jesus the Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. If you prayed that prayer on tonight, According to the word of God, you are saved. So I want to encourage you to connect with a Bible teaching, Bible believing church so you can grow in what you have confessed and what you have believed. And if you need our church for anything, please call us, the Innovation Baptist Church, 850-575-0818. Or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org. And someone will help you along the way. If you have confessed, you have believed, your next step is to be baptized. And that is to show the outside world of your belief, your confession, your profession. So if you need us for any of that, please call us at the above mentioned numbers and we will help you along the way. And if you are backslidden, you walked away from the presence of the Lord, you are saved, but you just decided you would go your own way. But now you need to return. So we pray that you will make that decision as soon as possible. Don't put it off for some other time. Don't wait until you think that you can get yourself together. Ask God to get you together as you come back to him. He will welcome you with open arms. He will restore you back to the fold. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you for watching on tonight. If you need a replay of this message, you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and you can get the replay, and you can even share it with someone else that you think may need this word 
on tonight. <clears throat> well, until Sunday morning at 9.30 for our uh, Sunday morning worship experience, worship in the word, 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed. Certainly is my prayer.